no, not that next generation, MVPN next generation. Welcome back to the MVPN video series. In today's video, we introduce the topic of next generation MVPN, talk specifically about the need for such an invention, discuss the problems with the previous status quo it promises to solve, and provide a high level overview of how it goes about solving the problems described. Let's begin. Before we go headfirst into the topic, let's quickly recap the options we have covered so far. All in all, we have covered three major options. These are known in Cisco land as Profile 0, Profile 1, and Profile 6 or 7. As we will learn officially in a few moments, any MVPN solution, also known as Profile, must describe at least three major mechanisms. The first mechanism describes how the PEs maintain a multicast adjacency, but more importantly, how they exchange customers' multicast state information with each other. In profiles 0 and 1, both the adjacency maintenance and the signaling were carried out by bringing up CPIM adjacencies between the PE routers across the MPLS core. If you're unsure about how this happens, the previous videos in the series cover these topics in adequate detail. Now, in profiles 6 or 7, things were different. There was no adjacency maintenance at all, and the signaling, well, that was the responsible responsibility of the SP score MLDP process. Once again, the previous videos in the series cover this topic in plenty of detail. The next mechanism should describe how the C multicast packets are transported across the MPLS core. In profile zero, or draft Rosen, the packet transport was IP-based using multipoint GRE tunnels to achieve true multicast across the core. The problem is that the mechanism is still IP-based and not MPLS-based. Profile 1 and Profile 6.7, however, are a major improvement here, and they use MPLS, specifically mpls based for packet transport. You know by now where the details are to be found. Finally, these SP core trees, the ones that are responsible for the multicast packet transport, they must somehow themselves be signaled across the SP core. Appropriately, the IP based trees in profile zero must be signaled via an IP multicast mechanism, or in other words, via PIM. It is called PPIM in this case to distinguish the SP's PIM or provider PIM from the customer's PIM or C PIM. For profiles 1 and 6.7, the core tree signaling is the responsibility of MLDP or multipoint label distribution protocol. So, the question you should be asking now probably should be, we already have at least three mechanisms that seem to solve the problem. Then why are we working on a fourth or a fifth or a sixth one? The devil, as they say, is in the details. Let's look at them now. As with any new solution, well, most new solutions, what an engineer mostly is looking for is to solve some of the issues of the previous generation. So it pays some dividends to look at the shortcomings of the status quo before we look at the next iteration. For the first drawback, we must realize that the MVPN is just an extension of the traditional Layer 3 VPN. And if we look at the control plane mechanism of L3 VPN, from the get-go it was established to be BGP. This is not the case with traditional MVPN solutions, which use varyingly either PIM or MLDP in the control plane. This is true for profile 0, 1, and 6, 7. This means there is a necessity for the operators to be well-versed in additional technologies. This can have additional human capital repercussions, and this is far from ideal, especially when it can be fixed. The other drawback is scalability, or rather the lack of scalability with all three solutions. When CPIM is used in the overlay, so profile 0 and profile 1, one must realize that the core is just an emulated LAN. The implication then is that each PE that is part of the MVPN must be CPIM adjacent with the other PEs participating in the MVPN. 
The drawback is exacerbated by the fact that full mesh of adjacencies must exist per VRF. So the old equation, n times n minus 2 divided by 2, that only scratches the surface of the problem. Because in the worst case scenario, this number for MVPNs would be a multiple of that equation's result because of the multiple VRFs. Clearly far from scalable. These drawbacks are further, further exacerbated by the fact that PIM is a soft state protocol. That means all the states, the adjacency state and all the C multicast states, they must be refreshed every given interval. And we are even farther from a scalable solution. Alternatively, in profile 6.7, when MLDP in-band signaling is used, a unique MLDP state must be created for each C multicast flow. Remember, the flows are just mapped to their own uh, unique MLDP multipoint LSPs. This means that the growth of the MLSPs would grow linearly as with this C multicast states. Again, at the surface, the problem already seems bad, but oh, it gets worse once the surface is crashed. As opposed to CPIM in the overlay, take a second to realize which routers would have to hold these exploding MLDP states in their database. Do you have that answer? The answer is not only the PE, but also the P routers the MLSP traverses through. That's just how MLDP works. So this time, not only are the edge routers affected, but large swaths of the core can be affected as well. So the problem statement then has been established. Time to discuss the solution. It's BGP, the solution's BGP. Because as I often say, of course it's BGP. Well, at the very least, the solution mostly revolves around BGP. Forget the details for a second. Those will be discussed at an appropriate time later for now. Let's just assume that BGP is actually capable of providing the services our Profile 0, Profile 1, and Profile 6, 7 protocols provided. What benefits over their respective drawbacks then can we expect to receive? Well, right out of the gate, we have managed to unify the control plane for L3 VPN and MVPN. Now, I'm not claiming that MVPN extensions for BGP are exactly the same as L3 VPN ones, but what is true is that the underlying BGP mechanisms are very similar. So an operator can leverage her understanding of concepts such as route distinguishers and route targets directly from L3 VPN with ease towards MVPN. Next issue was scalability. With BGP, that problem can be ameliorated. You see, the new MVPN extension can simply ride over the existing BGP sessions once the new address family has been negotiated between the peers. So what used to be a full mesh of PIM adjacencies per VRF can now be multiplexed over as little as a single BGP session, for example, to a route reflector. Also, BGP is a hard state protocol, so no constant refreshing needed, ever. The last drawback pertained to MLDP in-band signaling, and with BGP signaled MVPN, just like with BGP signaled L3 VPN, P routers absolutely do not need to be involved in the control plane. So it would seem that BGP can, once again, solve all the drawbacks of a known solution. That BGP is a major part of the next generation MVPN solution, there is nary a doubt. But the authors define the framework to be a lot more than just a single BGP and LRI. The framework was ratified in RFC 6513 with a closely related RFC 6514 defining the BGP SAFI and the NLRI. The framework itself is meant to give a greater amount of flexibility to MVPN solutions. This is done by breaking down the MVPN solution into a few core components. In fact, if one studies the Cisco MVPN profile documents, it is clearly visible in the naming how the profiles are basically just supported combinations of these components. The beauty is that the components are loosely coupled, which means one component theoretically can be changed with an alternate without affecting the other components. Before we discuss that further, let us look at the components themselves. 
first component is how the PEs in the MVPN discover each other. So for example, they can be statically defined at each PE. They can use BGP auto discovery or alternatively like in profile zero or profile one, they can leverage CPIM. Next is the signaling of the C multicast states. Again, the options are myriad. You can use BGP, CPIM, MLDP in-band signaling, and even static mapping. Finally, there is a component that lets the C multicast packets switch across the SP core. Some of the options could be unicast via ingress replication, multipoint GRE as we used in profile zero, or MLDP as in profile one or profile six, seven. So here is an example of the flexibility this model provides. Suppose one was happy with profile one, but the growing network will just not scale with the CPIM full mesh neighborship requirement. Well, the CPIM component now can be changed out while keeping the rest of the profile constant. In fact, take a look at profile 13 in the Cisco provided MVPN document. It does exactly that. It keeps the MLDP MP to MP core tree constant and replaces the CPIM based C multicast signaling with BGP based C multicast signaling. You might be wondering about the BGP AD piece in there and the succinct reason is that with CPIM, you get both auto discovery and signaling. So profile one just does not state that explicitly. With profile 13, the auto discovery is stated explicitly. Hopefully the flexibility of the solution is a little bit more obvious now. So up next, we will introduce and simultaneously take a deep dive into the BGP MVP and SAFI NLRI and its various components. We will look at each component individually as well as part of the whole and how it fits into the overall NG MVP and framework. Till then, I would like to thank you for joining us and urge you to stay tuned for our next video. Thanks. Thanks.